What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and today I'm going to talk about HTTP2 load balancing, right? And to use HTTP2 load balancer, no we need to talk about reverse proxy because this puppy right here is the reverse proxy that will act like a load balancer. And we talked about what reverse proxy and load balancer. If you want to know the difference between a proxy and reverse proxy, check out this playlist guys uh, right here. But here's the thing. To talk about HTTP2 load balancing, there are two ways to define what that means, right? There is HTTP2 at the front end. Let's say this is called a front end, right? And there is HTTP2 at the back end. And I am going to talk about both cases, right? And this is very, very critical, guys, because it really, really depends on what do you mean by HTTP2 load balancing when you actually mention that. You have to be very precise, especially as a back-end engineer, guys. All right, so let's, let's get into it. So I'm going to take the case where the front end, and when I say front end, usually the verse proxy is always have a front end and a back end. The back end to talk to the back end servers because it needs to load balance with other servers at the back end, right? Right? And uh, that's why front end and back end is very overloaded. I mean, front end could be code that is in JavaScript here, right? But front end could also be this guy, right? This is also a front end that talks to a back end in this case. You can treat this as a front end that talks to, a, I don't know, a Redis database or a um, a Maria DB, right? So that's front end and back end really overloaded. So you really need the context to understand that. So, all right. All right. So let's talk about that. I'm going to talk about the front end being H2 here, but the back end being H1 for simplicity because a lot of web servers are like that. Okay. And the reason is because this server, the front end of this server is H1, right? So what are you going to do, right? This is uh, Apache. Okay, and then only support H1. I think Apache Oops, server supports H2. I might be wrong there. All right, so what does this mean? This means the client has to support H2, right? If you're a browser, you're covered. If you're a C-sharp application, probably you're going to need an H2, an HTTP2 client library, right? That is able to do the HTTP2 stuff, right? So what happens? Let's assume that. The first thing that happens, a beautiful, beautiful TCP connection will be established between the client and the web server, all right? And uh, what will happen here is I'm about to send a GET request. A GET request will be reserved for a single stream, right? Let's say I call this stream one on HTTP2. Guys, if you want to know how HTTP2 works, check out my video. I talk about HTTP2. All right. So the stream one will be reserved for get to get the index.html, right? And let's say stream two, which is the purple, will be used and will be sent in parallel to get the CSS. And let's say stream orange stream three the orange will be to get the javascript okay and this s3 s2 and s1 all this information will be sent as different stream in the same tcp connection that's the power of h2 right but this puppy right here need to understand what's going on right so let's say Packet one, not packet one, the request number one was received successfully. And you might say, what does that mean, Hussein? Received successfully. That means all the packets for stream one that belong to stream one has been received because there will be packets for stream one and there will be packets for stream two, right? These will be transferred into packets, right? It'd be four packets, could be three, whatever. Who knows, right? Depends on the size, I guess, on the maximum transmit, transmit unit, right? So this could be like, I don't know, six, who knows. And then 
you'll start this, this for this server is going to start receiving a, a bunch of packets that have no idea what, what are they, right? Just a bunch of packets. And then it needs to actually receive all of them to start really understand what they mean, right? So they will be unpacked and they will be essentially have the information. Oh, this is stream one. I'm going to group these together. Oh, this is a stream two. I'm going to group this together. Oh, I'm going to this is stream. I'm going to group this together, all right? So that's how it works. These are three different requests. What will happen here is since it will now sit down and says, so what it will do is, like, okay, I got this stream. This will be a request. So let me establish a TCP connection with the back end. Um, let's assume round robin and layer seven proxying, okay? So I'm going to do round robin, pick up one connection, establish TCP connection. You might argue who's saying that's wrong. Uh, uh, smooth reverse proxy preheat uh, the back end with the existing TCP connection. And I'm, I'm going to say oh, you are absolutely true. But now I establish this and I will send. There's no streams in each one, right? So I'm just like, oh, let's send that get request that does the index.html. All right. And then send it over and that other request oh i'm using round robin let me use this guy doesn't have to be purple by the way guys i'm just gonna use the same or you know what let's just use the same cost so we don't get confused here right so this guy will get oh, all right this guy will be sent here because we're round robbing this stuff right css the css is blue all right and then i don't know Let's say the orange, right? Let's say we didn't receive any, any response yet, right? The client will not wait, right? The client here, here, the client, well, it depends on the, on the configuration. How many maximum connections did you configure here? If you say two, you're, you're screwed. You're, this request is blocked until one of these requests actually responds. So I can use the TCP connection to send another request. I cannot send the same request on the same TCP connection. That's not how issue H1 works. Otherwise, you're going to get into bad, bad idea, right? Bad idea. You cannot do same request on the same TCP connection. It doesn't work with H1, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to wait. Or some connections, some TCP connections, some reverse proxy will say, oh, no, wait, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to establish a new TCP connection with this guy. Because around Robin, right? This one, this one, and now go back to this one. And now I'm going to send my get request. To JS. So this way, this guy will respond. Let's make all the response in blue, because why not? I'm lazy. This guy respond. This guy respond. This guy responds. It will assemble the results and will start sending those results one by one, right? For each one, okay? On the same pipe for each two. So it will now, if if this is a TLS termination proxy, it will decrypt the traffic. Look at the data, understand and do all this mumbo jumbo that we talked about, re-encrypt the data and send it to this information. Assuming this is also a shtata pa us. Right? Assuming this is also TLS, right? TLS, TLS. Because they are both encrypted, so I need to establish double double encryption here. So it's not really double encryption. So re-encrypting, decrypting, encrypting, decrypting. Right. So you might argue, says, oh, isn't this slow? Because I'm encrypted and decrypting. Yeah, of course. There's, It's not really, it's negligible, but it's there. So that's why you, as a backend engineer, you need to understand what's going on, guys, right? You need to understand this stuff, right? So let's talk about the case where the backend is ashtatapai2. All right, guys. Let's talk about the idea if the backend is HTTP2, what will happen? Let's say this is my backend is HTTP2 because I'm I'm so badass. My web server, my reverse proxy is actually H2 on the front end and H2 on the back end because I'm so badass, right? So now what we'll do is we'll establish one beautiful TCP connection from the front end to the back end and then another front end uh, a TCP connection from this guy to this guy. I don't know why I'm switching languages, accents. Okay, I I, I do the I switch accent when I'm I'm, I'm getting sleepy and I'm about to nap. <laughs> Excusez-moi, uh, s'il vous plaît. 
So what we're gonna do here, I'm here at TCP Action and I understand it too. And this puppy also understand it too. And this puppy also understand it too. You, you better have all these all your web servers in order and they are absolutely configured correctly otherwise you're gonna get into really weird situations guys all right so let's see what will happen here the white request the white request which is get i received it i received all i'm not gonna wait for all of them guys to come in to assemble and make sense whatever i make sense of one request then i'm going to send it and i consume it and i'm gonna start processing it right so now i will send my git request into a stream one on this web server assuming again round robin okay and then i'm gonna send that all right what i think will happen and i'm, I'm not aware of any web server that have http2 at the back end correct me if i'm wrong guys right but what will happen is the following i am going to send that get request on stream one on this TCP connection and what 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 do you guys think what will happen where will the stream two go where will will the stream go here or this or to the server I think I, I can argue both right to me I would expect it to go here as stream one write the comment section below what you get what guys think it should happen right i think it should go to this stream right because you can you can e as easily just send it on this because there's no there's no problem and you can say well otherwise well technically i think it should go to this because otherwise you're overloading this web server right because and you don't want that otherwise you're not truly load balancing at the layer seven load uh, layer uh, layer seven uh, layer okay and then uh obviously the orange if this is round robin it's gonna flip back and send this as a stream to right and to get the javascript javascript is supposed to be uh, yellow i'm not i don't know why i did it this way all right guys so that's what will happen that's what we'll send it and we're gonna give the result back let's make an all blue because that cause just cause just cause right Ooh, good result Ooh, good result Ooh. obviously we're not gonna wait for all the response whenever we have a response we're gonna response is okay this is stream one this is stream two this is stream three right we're gonna start collecting the results we're gonna start popping no, same thing right same thing these packets exist here and then x acts the same exact way and uh, you might say, oh, saying, what about uh, if we used quick on the front end and the back end, right? That's another idea for another video, guys. I, I want to explore what you guys think about this, right? Personally, I don't think quick is worth it to, to be implemented at the back end, but I might be wrong. There is benefits to have quick at the front end because uh, here, here, there are oceans and stuff, right? And then there's like barriers between the client and the actual server but these guys these puppies they're all on the same even subnet right and they are probably have like one terabyte worth of bandwidth between them so using th that's the only value quick has over htp2 which is the retrans it doesn't have the uh, head of line blocking problem of stcp and I talk about this problem a little bit in uh, HTTP2 limitation, uh, the video, check it out here. But I don't see a value of implementing Quick on the back end, to be honest. And I, and I, I checked out a video by uh, Google. They saw literally 1.3% improvement with Quick over HTTP2. Is it really worth it to switch for 1.3? I don't think so, right? Especially in the back end. I mean, yeah, here with udp you don't have the extra retransmission and all that stuff right especially the t same tcp connection if, if one packet here didn't get transmitted <laughs> unfortunately the web server has to wait for all the <laughs> all the packets from all streams despite this thinking packet uh have a 
there's a problem with it, right? It wasn't transmitted. So the, we, the reverse proxy is waiting for the entire thing just for this to receive, to actually assemble this, because it doesn't know. It has no idea that this, for all it knows, this could be a stream two or three or one, right? So it needs just to wait. It just doesn't know, right? So it it's 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 the tcp layer that is blocking this thing it's not the application layer if the application layer would know that it would have just oh wait a second what you don't have to wait that's why udb quick implemented this logic at the uh, network layer and they introduced the idea of streams at that layer so the application can just benefit of the idea of streams or or channels i prefer the idea of channels all right guys i think that's it i'm gonna end the video here uh, let me know what you think give this video a like if you like it and i'm gonna see you on the next one you guys stay awesome